the best and the brightest of Cambodian society were systematically killed and buried in mass graves known as the killing fields. Ordinary Cambodians were forced into huge labor camps where thousands more died from starvation and exhaustion. Family life was outlawed. Cambodians were told their new family was Anka, Pol Pot's faceless party. Pol Pot was the beginning of an act of suicide for Cambodia. I believe that Pol Pot at a profound and deep level kind of understood that. And I believe that at a profound unconscious level, many Cambodians understood that too and participated in that willingly. His power absolute, Pol Pot became increasingly paranoid. He accused those closest to him of being microbes infesting the party and sent his agents to arrest them and their families. In a suburban high school turned torture chamber, thousands of his purported enemies were systematically murdered. Like the Puritans in the Salem witch trials, Pol Pot extracted bizarre confessions from his victims before having them killed. He accused many of his longtime aides of spying for the CIA, the KGB, or both. They were tortured until they came to believe his lies. One old comrade accused was Hu Nim. After his arrest, he held out under months of beatings and then finally broke down, saying, I am an animal. I am not a human being. So there came a point in the torture where Hunim became convinced that there was a CIA agent inside him. He didn't believe it was actually a CIA agent, but he believed maybe there is something inside me that was treacherous that I don't understand. He signed the confession, and everybody was in the game. Pol Pot educated the people that the Cambodian revolution was special. He said our revolution was the model for a world revolution. In 1977, under pressure from his allies in China, Pol Pot finally revealed himself as Cambodia's communist leader. Like Mao, his image began to appear everywhere. His own family was living in one of the camps, and it was only when they saw his photo that they realized their long-lost brother, Saloth Saar, was running the country. I saw a photograph in the eating hall, and it was then that I knew that Pol Pot was Saloth Saar. I was kind of shocked. It didn't seem right for him to be in charge of such a regime his regime being on under which the people suffer. I mean, we think in our imaginations an evil man must show his evilness in thuggery and all that sort of stuff, but no, this was finely chiseled face, small, delicate hands, and he spoke very quietly. Pol Pot had hoped that the outside world would be inspired by his revolution but his blindness to reality would soon prove to be his undoing. At 53, Pol Pot was at last recognized on the world stage. 
but his paranoia took over once again. For 25 years, he had harbored resentment against his fellow communists in Vietnam, and now he mistakenly thought they were going to invade. To preempt this imagined attack, he sent Khmer Rouge troops into Vietnam, where they slaughtered hundreds of villagers. This action provoked Hanoi into launching a full-scale invasion in December 1978. And within days, Vietnamese troops had taken the capital. Pol Pot had no choice but to flee. Thanks to his own arrogance, he'd paved the way for his arch enemies to take over his nation. If he had given the Vietnamese no reason to want to attack him, Pol Pot could still be in charge today, and Cambodia could be still a living hell. The Vietnamese closed down the labor camps. The entire nation was on the move as Cambodians searched for lost relatives. Gradually, the full scale of Pol Pot's terror began to emerge. In every corner of the country were the killing fields, mass graves holding the remains of two million people. No Cambodian family remained untouched. Pol Pot himself had escaped and again sought refuge in the jungle. Despite his flawed leadership, the Khmer Rouge remained loyal. With help from Thailand, he established a new base here on the Thai-Cambodian border. With 100,000 troops under his command, he plotted his comeback. Throughout the 1980s, his troops attacked civilian trains, took hostages, and indiscriminately planted landmines throughout the countryside. While Pol Pot lurked in the shadows, he reverted to his old tactics. He put forward his affable deputy, Ku Sam Pang, as the respectable public face of the Khmer Rouge. And once again, he joined forces with his oldest rival, Prince Sihanouk. Although Sihanouk now despised the Khmer Rouge, he saw it as a necessary evil in the war against the Vietnamese. The West agreed. At the height of the Cold War, Pol Pot was a useful buffer against Vietnam. America's tacit support helped to sustain the Khmer Rouge. But as the Cold War ended, Pol Pot's days were numbered. Vietnam withdrew from Cambodia, and in 1992, the United Nations effectively took over the country. With UN backing, Sihanouk at last broke with Pol Pot. His triumphant return to Phnom Penh symbolized a new era of hope. Without his support, the Khmer Rouge was finished. By 1997, Pol Pot's once mighty Khmer Rouge had dwindled to just 3,000 troops. Paranoid and alone, he saw enemies everywhere. He ordered the execution of Song Sen, one of his oldest and closest aides. Even by the standards of the Khmer Rouge, Pol Pot had gone too far. At their jungle base, Pol Pot's former aides arrested their broken leader and staged a show trial for the benefit of a Western journalist. For many, the trial created the impression that Pol Pot had finally been brought to justice. This trial was uh, videotaped by a Western journalist who had good connections in the Khmer Rouge. 
They tried him for treason, for turning on one of his own, but not for killing all those Cambodians who had died under his rule. I don't think much of the public and the outside world realized that. Pol Pot died in April 1998, and to the day of his death, he remained unrepentant. Neither he nor any of the Khmer Rouge have ever been punished for their crimes. Even those who knew Pol Pot well can't connect the actions with the man. One friend who lost four children under his regime recently met his old comrade. He asked me what had happened in the countryside. I told him we had to scavenge for food with the animals. I told him the people did not sing anymore. This was a surprise for him. Pol Pot dreamed of restoring the grandeur of Cambodia's ancient past. Instead, he turned his nation into one of the world's poorest, and the memory of two million dead still haunt his countrymen. Cambodia will not recover from what it's gone through for the next century. A hundred years from now, people will still see the mark of this disaster that Pol Pot put on Cambodia. The Khmer Rouge and Pol Pot will go down as one of the two or three greatest genocidal, mass-murdering, brutal regimes the world has ever seen. <laughs>